For the past year or so, I've been working on a tabletop RPG called Arcane Ugly. The game is all about wild magic and uh, finding cool treasure and exploring and encountering cool monsters and creating a group narrative with your friends. The thing is though that for my game, I need a lot of art and um, I'm not particularly good at drawing. I wouldn't even say I'm particularly good at art either, but I think I have found a bit of a way to cheat a little bit. And I wanna show you how I do that. I think the one word that we're looking for is style. And to get style, we need limitations. Does that make sense? Let me explain. Have you noticed uh, recently with like indie computer games, there's a lot of pixel art and a lot of like retro PS1 style graphics. That's totally because it's a much more approachable art form for non-artists uh, to make aesthetic looking games. And that's what we've got to do for our game. That's where we incorporate style over technical ability. So look, you can probably uh, guess what one of my technical limitations are uh, that I'm using as a uh, style. And yeah, it's black and white. Solid black and white, not just grayscale, but black or white as my color choices. And I do that for about three or so reasons. The main one is that it's really fast for me to make art for. I've developed a bit of a style with uh, a photocopier, whiteout, markers, um, black pens. That's really fast for me to produce uh, treasure cards and little doodles for that look effective and look like I sort of know what I'm doing. The other thing is I can give other artists the brief of black and white and um, that means that all the art that I create is sort of cohesive for the game. And it also means that they can also create art a lot faster too, rather than having to color everything, uh, which is either a cheaper for me or makes me feel less guilty when my friends who are very kind make art for me. Um, the other reason is that I can always go back and hand color everything in a consistent way later on. Like if I want to kickstart the game, for example, that could be a stretch goal. But for now, black and white, I think looks bloody awesome. Um, I really want to show you this upstairs part though, because speaking of other artists, that's the next thing. Okay, so this space is pretty recent to my studio. This is my upstairs uh, reading, writing, uh, arting uh, nook which I've been letting people who have been working on Arcane Ugly with me use so they can have their own space uh, writing or drawing while I'm down there uh, doing stuff. Or sometimes I'm up here uh, working with them and I love it so much. Um, uh, one person that's been up here quite a lot is Rachel, my beautiful girlfriend. Uh, she's been creating fantastic art for me, which is just all over the walls. She's the best. Uh, Rachel. Hi. <laughs> what are you working on right now? I'm working on a digital art piece. Show the people. <laughs> it is a tavern called The Squealing Pig and there's a centaur that's strolling past. So, Very good. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. Um, what is it like working for me? It's very stressful. Working conditions are awful. No, um, no. And um, what sort of art prompts do I give you? Um, really random things. Really random ideas from your brain that don't make much sense, and I try to make sense of them. Is that what you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is a piece that Rachel made recently that I just, ah, oh, I love. Actually, all the stuff that she does is so fantastic. This is a little backpack um, that's going to be used to hold all your item treasure cards uh, together. 
and you can name it and decorate it yourself. Isn't that cute? Uh, let me show you more of her art. Actually, let me show you everyone's art. Uh, so this wall has a whole bunch of brilliant friends that have been contributing to Arcane Ugly. Uh, all this stuff up here, this is all Rachel's wonderful artwork. One really brilliant thing about working with Rachel has been she's not quite um, tainted like me with all these like pre-existing ideas of what fantasy should look like. And often when I give her prompts and stuff, uh, she'll interject quite modern aesthetics into them, like this giant carrying a city on its back. That's quite fantasy, but the city is quite futuristic. And like uh, this fashion direction was uh, my idea, but like, you know, these cigarettes are very modern and these speech bubbles are very modern. And like the trims on the clothing is all very modern. And I think that's really cool. And that's inspired a lot of um, direction for law that I've been working on as well. Uh, this is Tanner Simpson uh, or Simpson Miniatures on Instagram. And yeah, he just creates the most weird and wild stuff and I love it so much. Fantastic for mutations and uh, miscast graphics and all that. These are gonna be all through the book. I have so much more from him as well. Um, Raquel, I've rendered some of her art in black and white just to see what it looked like. I really like it. Frankie, Frankie the Crafter, you know Frankie, bloody best. Uh, there's some of my artwork there as well. Up here is sort of a progression of, well, I asked Rachel if she could design me backs for my treasure cards and I wanted a three-eyed cat sitting on a treasure chest which he nailed. And we got this, and then um, it needs to be shrunk down really small, so I started refining it a little bit more, thickening lines that needed to be thicker, and then I thought I need to make it match the front, so I started adding trees, and eventually we got that, which is sort of a cool uh, collaboration between Rachel and I. I think we'd make a really cool poster. What do you think? I love the idea. Um, okay, onto my art. <laughs> I've been working on a whole bunch of art that depicts gods and deities and strange spells. And uh, I went on like a really weird vendor of making art for like uh, four days or something. And I made, I don't know how many pieces, like 20, 30 or something. I don't know, they're everywhere. Let me show you. So these three were the first pieces that I made. Um, and I went through a mythology book and I was going through all the depictions of gods and deities and I was like, ah, I really want to make stuff for Arcane Ugly. And I was like, well, are there gods and deities in Arcane Ugly? Well, I guess there has to be now. So um, making all this art has sort of shaped lore in Arcane Ugly as well, which I think is brilliant, working in one medium which inspires another. <sighs> I've tried to be quite uh, diverse where I get my reference images from all different cultures and then try to create an amalgamation of them and try to create something new. This piece right here is actually depicting a spell for creating a bridge. And these are all ghosts assembling a bridge right before you, maybe cobbling things together from the environment. And um, that led me on a tangent, like what would spells look like if we uh, didn't have written language. How would we record them? How would we create them? What if that was through art? Let me show you the results of that tangent I went on. I've been thinking a lot about who creates spells in Arcane Ugly. Is it one person creating a spell or is it a group of people making a spell? And that's what I've been exploring in some of these pieces. This one is all about portal magic. These are all different depictions of doorways and different realms and also different identities as well, because I think identity and portals is a really interesting thing. Like, uh, are you who you are when you step out the other side of a portal? Um, this I'm thinking is some sort of divination magic. Magic, but what I really like about this piece is the layering. And I'm wondering if uh, the process of creating spells, you could lay down art and then uh, draw more art on top of that and then more art on top of that. And maybe they are all, all those layers are still inherently magical. Maybe magical people can see all those layers for what they are, even if they're just covered up. I don't know. 
bit weird. This is for a spell for creating subspaces, spaces within spaces. A lot of people have told me like this reminds them of a factory, which I think is really cool. Um, I sort of pictured like there's God creating a world and asking all these beings for help. I've been doing things that aren't spells. Like this is just what happens when you find a cool artifact and you go mad, uh, just obsessing over it. Some sort of depiction of a important moment in history, maybe some sort of treaty or understanding. Uh, this is just a moth that landed on my desk, which I thought was really cute. <laughs> I love magic items so much that I decided that in Arcane Ugly, every single magic item, like a hundred of them, are gonna have their own unique pieces of artwork which is a big undertaking when you have no money and you need to do things relatively quickly. So what do you do? Uh, well, I developed a bit of a weird art style and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So when you hack up Arcane Ugly with its open game license, you too can make art for it. The secret to all this is templates. Uh, this is a template I created so I could give people that are working on Arcane Ugly um, a very specific requirement. Whatever you make has to fit within this box and it has to be in a physical medium. Uh, and that way, all the scales are all cohesive and similar and all the materials and textures are all the same scale. Sometimes we do cheat a bit. Rachel uses a uh, digital medium. She uses Procreate on the iPad. And uh, that means that I have to turn her drawings into physical uh, pieces. Now, in this case, I've printed them out, cut them out, slapped them on there with a cool background, and then I've gone over with a pen and sort of thickened up lines so everything is all in scale and it looks cool. You know, things like this gnome, which is brilliant. This is a history of gnomes magic book. It comes with a free gnome. The scale on the lines was all wrong at this scale, so I had to go over with a pen and uh, also make things a little less digital, a little bit more organic and cohesive with everything else, as well as just add backgrounds to all these cool things. Uh, these are all starter weapons that uh, players get at the start of the game. On the back of the cards have all these tables which you roll up to get unique identifiers about your weapons, whether they're sticky or rusty or have a cool emblem on them or something like that. Also, the starter weapons have like cool abilities depending on what weapon it is. Uh, once per combat, when you miss, you can use one of the special abilities to keep narratives going. It's pretty cool. Anyway, getting distracted. Let me show you how to do this art style. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, this is an art sheet I got from Rachel. It's just quick pen doodles. We need to refine this into artwork that could be on a card. And with our photocopy at high contrast, we start adding in background with textures and white out. We photocopy it again. You can see how the high contrast actually creates all that texture. We take gel pens, we add highlights, maybe bring these stars back in, uh, add a bit of a glow around things. And then we scan it and we have cards like that's the candle, that's the ball of rain, the mushrooms. Here's one that I did, and this is all permanent marker and whiteout, basically. What can I do with two uh, limitations? Marker, whiteout, that's this sheet. Then I scan it and get this. This one need a little bit more work, so I started using gel pens and add some more uh, details in there. But you get all these different styles from limitations. How far can we push this medium? Well, I thought, what happens if we spray paint the pages? So we spray paint it, use gel pens and white markers, and we get cool stuff like this. Uh, I really started experimenting with black backgrounds and this whiteout, and uh, all these are quite simple, but over time I was like, oh, I don't really like them anymore. So we just scan it and start drawing over the top of it again. It's a very destructive way of working, but um, I think it looks really cool and it's sort of punk a bit too, like how you make zines and stuff. I really like the aesthetic. All right, I'm gonna show you how to draw like me. This is a, uh, some sort of vase uh, pot thing that my mum found for me antique shopping. It's really cute. Um, we'll use that as inspiration. So we'll just start drawing its basic shape, I guess. Uh, my art style is uh, just uh, keep drawing and don't overthink it. Don't lift your pen off the page, just make a mess. We need this little handle, like the start of the elephant head thing. It's around like that. Refining it with our white out. We've got an ear there. 
We have uh, an eye uh, tusk. We need a big handle, some refinement on the top of this vase. Handle has some little decorations on it. Round the corners up here a bit. Add some shape to the top of the spout. Uh, now we just need a background. So we might color this in. A pen, add uh, a little bit more shape to the base of this. And there we go. That's an interesting magic item. We'll scan that and uh, we can turn that into something. My one piece of advice is don't overthink this process. It's all very simple shapes that add up into complicated shapes. And sometimes not even that. Sometimes the simple shapes are what look most effective. And that's balance between black and white or negative and positive space. How you utilize black and how you utilize white and their relationship between each other. What happens when you use thin lines or thick lines or black backgrounds or white backgrounds or white lines or black lines or black texture or white texture and what they look like next to each other and what they look like far apart and what looks like when one is textured and one is simple. It's all balance and relationships and with two very simple limitations, it's either black or it's white, you can create so many different styles. And under that umbrella is the style of Arcane Ugly. Limitations create style. Does that make sense? I know that all sounds very pretentious and silly sometimes. I think uh, this is all basic art principles. Um, I only paid a little bit of attention in art because Rachel was in my art classes. So um, yeah. Okay, so to answer your burning question, the first public release of Arcane Ugly is just around the corner. Um, I'm very, very excited. Until then, there's Patreon if you want to support the game in development. Um, and also, I'll be relaunching a merch page as well, uh, featuring all this cool art we've been making if you want to support development and look cool at the same time. Uh, yeah, okay. Bye. <laughs>